Okay. Um, so the question is, how do you approach different demographic groups in order to grow our party? And, and when we say different demographic groups, well, not just talking about minorities and gays, we're talking about uh, getting back seniors, veterans, college students. Uh, what's the plan? Uh, how do we go out there and go out uh, get these guys back in this space? When you look around, we're not very diverse uh, from a demographic standpoint. How do we do that? Well, first, you have to use the platform. Uh, the platform has a lot of common sense in it. And then you've got to figure out how you're going to get the message out there. You've got to go to nursing homes, you've got to go to organizations of, of uh, uh, people uh, that are older, and uh, or whatever group it is. You've got to figure out how to get to them. That's the hard part. Once you talk to them and you start talking about any portion of our traditional platform that relates to their tradition, and there's always something in there, uh, that talking to them is going to be 90% of the same. Uh, the Democrats do this better. I mean, uh, most of the organizations you see out there in the Yellow Pages are Democratic organizations. AARP is a Democrat organization. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's not a simple thing, but uh, if we use the platform, people will buy it. Well, we need to have you know, a party that's driven from the, the grassroots up, and I think that's how we can get more people engaged to go out and talk to their neighbors and bring them into the party. However, we've had a, a tendency as a party to try to come from the top down. I was there in the room in August at the RNC Rules Committee meeting, and there were a lot of people, quite honestly, were somewhat vindictive in their approach and were trying to pass rule changes because they weren't happy with certain groups coming into the party. And that's and they were pushing the rule changes because of a reaction to new people coming into the party. And I think that's exactly the wrong approach. If we're to grow and strengthen our party, you know, we need to be going out uh, bringing in more young people who are worried about their constitutional rights being taken away by an ever growing federal and state government. We need to be going out and bringing in pro-lifers concerned about the unborn. And we need to be giving, making sure that their voice is heard at the top of our party. And that requires that we fundamentally respect the principle that we should be a grassroots party and that we as Republicans will win from the bottom up. Here's where I think I disagree with Bill um, quite a lot. He talks about the grassroots, and I agree with that, but he uh, talks about the grassroots bottom up and top down. And people, our problem is not that we spend too much time and energy going up and down in the Republican Party. Our problem is that we don't spend any time going out from the Republican Party. And to think that we can technique our way to a bright new future for the Republican Party, I think, is not the solution. You look at any organization that gets in the kind of trouble we're in, and it's not technique, it's not how they're capitalized, it's not their marketing brochures, it's that, that there are fundamental things that aren't right. And one of the fundamental things that is not right in our party right now is that we are focused internally. We're spending our time here talking about the platform and we're talking about RNC rules and all of these things. And you know what, all of that's important. When you're the chair, you're the steward of that, I get that. But if we are actually going to win elections and get to a 50.1% consistent majority in the state of Minnesota, it's because we go out to the people of Minnesota. We have got to turn our attention outward and building new coalitions of Minnesota voters, not GOP coalitions, coalitions of Minnesota voters, farmers, miners, all these people out there are just waiting to hear a Republican message that shows them that they should be voting for us. So that's, that's my uh, overriding perspective on, on that question. And so uh, I hear a lot of uh, grassroots and going out there and talk to people and stuff like that. But I've heard uh, solid, you know, who are those people? Like, I mean, do we have a name of organizations, name of people that we're looking for, uh, a specific uh, demographic and, and a specific uh, uh, targeting plan for those guys? Uh, so I mean, is it just all Republicans going? Who are those people and who's going to go talk to them? Well, I'll just, you know, being a grassroots activist, I actually work uh, day to day in my job with people uh, who are ordinary citizens. They aren't in this room right now. 
and they're uh, a mix of blue collar people, a mix of professional people, a mix of younger people, a mix of older people. And, you know, I listen, and because they know I'm involved in politics, they share with me you know, some of their concerns. Um, you know, quite honestly, some of them consider themselves Arnie Carlson Republicans, and the, their perspective is that we need to be the party for fiscal responsibility. Others would consider themselves uh, not Republicans, but they're more libertarians. They want the party to be going out there and talking about uh, you know, civil liberties and protecting our constitutional rights. So we need to be, and I, I think fundamentally, I, I, this is what I, I do differ with, with Keith, I, I guess being on perspective and emphasis, is having a grassroots party from the bottom up uh, is important. That's why I, it is important to build, bringing those people in, so making sure that they're not artificially excluded from the party. And that's why I, at the State Central Committee meeting last December, uh, led the fight on the floor to push back against an attempt to exclude people from the party, uh, from the State Central Committee meeting, because that sends the wrong message to those people on the ground that we as Republicans need to go out and into our party. Uh, we talked a lot, and there's been a lot of talk lately about going out and bringing in more groups. The Hispanics has, has said, many people have said, uh, we're not supporting it very well this time, and they go through the litany of all the other groups that are not is supporting this as well as good. Well, we don't have teams, we shouldn't have teams that go to nursing homes in this place and that place. Uh, we should focus on that, but we have to remember that the way we get the people always with the Republican Party is not with press releases, not with debates. Uh, we get to them through campaigns because that's when people are paying attention. So our outreach needs to be somehow organized and focused around getting our candidates to get to as many people in their districts as possible in these categories, people with basic traditional values, getting back to the Hispanics, they are traditionalists. We need to get back to their Catholic and Hispanic traditions because they are our uh, But we do that through campaigns. People don't listen to us uh, during most of the rest of the time. I'll try and answer your question, Chris, in terms of exactly who and, and how we go after them. It's a little tough in a minute, but it's a little tough because I don't think we want to put our uh, 2014 election strategy out there for our opponents. But um, I am always really hesitant. I, I, I kind of don't like hyphenated uh, Americans, and I don't like hyphenated uh, Republicans when we start to group people together, right? Even the fact that we bought into the definitions of uh, middle class and lower class, right? I mean, this is a land of opportunity. And, and the fact that we categorize and group people like this, I think in some ways indicates that we've already uh, kind of granted the ground of language uh, to our Democratic opponents. Having said that, you know, you've been at a very high level kind of macro demographic uh, layer say, you know, we don't do real well uh, with women, we don't do real well with young people, we don't do real well with seniors and minorities. Fair enough. But as Bond said, hanging a new brochure out there saying we support you know, community X, Y, Z isn't going to cut it. And so where do those people live in work? It's in the churches. It's in their other associations. Um, you've got uh, trade associations. You've got neighborhoods. You've got all these things. And so I think we need to reach people through where they live in work. A lot of that is geographic. And the Democrats, you know what they did through their technology and their outreach efforts last year? They knew what every single person in their district was concerned about. And they went out of my district, they found 4,000 new voters who were willing to vote for them because they went to that level of detail and understanding each and every person. So we got kind of a top to bottom challenge for identifying people and getting our message out there. Uh, 